All right, so this is really the big deal of the day. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Actually, this is part one. There are two parts to the fundamental theorem. We will not today go through a proof of this fundamental theorem. Perhaps later, I don't know, later in the week or over the weekend, maybe I'll put together when I have some more time, I'll put together an, uh, uh, a lesson on how the, the, the proof of the fundamental theorem. Uh, for us, for now, for this semester, with everything that's going on, we will simply accept the fundamental theorem as true, as a true statement. The fundamental theorem has to do with how to compute this definite integral. So we will assume we have all the structure that goes into this expression. Uh, we have a continuous function on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, we have a partition, everything that goes into the construction of the Riemann sum, and when we take the limit of that Riemann sum, we generate this definite integral. Now this is what the fundamental theorem says. It says, if cap f of x, or little f, we have cap f of f, f of x, is any antiderivative. of little f of x. Remember that little f of x has an infinite number of antiderivatives because when we find the antiderivative of little f is cap f of x, that's the symbol, but remember we always add the constant of integration. So depending upon the choice of the constant, uh, uh, different people doing the same computation might get different constants or you're allowed to use it, different constants. The fundamental theorem says take any of it. It doesn't matter which one. Take any one of these. Uh, you can allow C to be 15 or negative 1 or 28 or 150 or negative 9. Whatever you like the constant to be, choose any of them. They all work. Usually what that means for us, since we are free to choose any of them, we are going to choose the one that has C equal to 0. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But we are free to choose at cap f to be any antiderivative of little f. If that's the case, then the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx is given by cap f evaluated at b, cap f evaluated at a, and that's it. You take the antiderivative, evaluate it at the upper limit, and evaluate it at the lower limit, and subtract them, and that's it. That's the fundamental theorem. It says that's how you compute a definite integral. So the, the definite integral from a to b of little f of x dx is cap f of x, cap f evaluated at b, minus cap F evaluated at A. Now, this symbol has a shorthand notation. We write that so frequently, there's a shorthand notation. So we write this. We may write this as cap F of X, and then you write a vertical line. Anyone who knows what you're doing knows what that symbol means. This is standard in all the textbooks a vertical line, and you read that evaluated. Sometimes you'll say evaluated from, but evaluated. And then at the bottom, you put the lower limit of integration. At the top, you put the upper limit of integration. And we read this as cap f of x evaluated from a to b. Even though we read it evaluated from a to b, you compute the upper limit of integration first and then the of subtract the lower limit of integration. This is standard. What I will usually do and what textbooks occasionally do just because we need to keep the order of operations handy, what I will typically do is rather than simply write the vertical line, what I will do is put bra brackets. And so this is also standard. This is the method that I will write. Uh, I will write this every time. This is what I grew up with and this is I think in many cases more convenient, and I will use the bracket version, but if you write the vertical line version, it's, it's correct. You need to use your notation correctly. So, 
uh, that's the evaluation, that's the statement of the fundamental theorem. Let cap F be any antiderivative, and then the definite integral from A to B of F of X dx is cap F evaluated from A to B. What that means is you evaluate at the upper limit, subtract, it is always subtract because of the fundamental theorem, then you evaluate at the lower limit. It's upper limit minus lower limit, Compute that function value, compute that function value, subtract them, and that's the value for this, for this definite interval.